all together and don't be divided amongst yourselves. And remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies one to another. And Allah joined your hearts together and He made you brothers. You are on the brink of the pit of the fire of hell, about to fall in, but Allah saved you. These are the ayat of Allah that He gives to you in the hopes that you will get the hidayah of Allah Islam. This ayat is describing the condition that the companions who were human beings were dealing with at that particular time. And that they were mukhtarifun, muqtatirun, fima bayna al They were people who were disunited. The distance between the East and the West was closer than their hearts with each other prior to Al Islam. They were racist towards each other and they hated each other. And they looked and they found every opportunity and every reason to remain divided. So the ayat is talking about the condition of the Arabs in general, but specifically what happened with the Ansar of Al Medina. The Ansar are made up of two tribes, the Aus and the Khazraj. And they were at each other's necks fighting over issues that took place in Jahiliya. They were fighting because of a divorce that took place 200 years ago. If you were to ask one of them during the time of Rasulullah why do you have a problem with his family? He would say, I don't know. I just know we don't like them and they don't like us. Like some of the Muslims, if you ask them, why do you have a problem with that particular Muslim family, your brothers, your sisters? They'll say, I don't know. It's just been like that for as long as I can remember. That's how their condition was. They were fighting each other over a horse race that took place 300 years ago. And then Rasulullah came, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah Ta'ala put their hearts together. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran concerning the thing that was the ultimate success in bringing them together. When he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, هو الذي أيدك بنصره وبالمؤمنين وألف بين قلوبهم لو انفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم Allah is the one who helped you Ya Muhammad with the Nasr and he also helped you with the believers Allah brought their hearts together. If you, Muhammad, if you were to spend all of what was in the earth, if you made the infaq of all of the treasures in the earth, you wouldn't have never brought their hearts together, ever, impossible. But Allah brought their hearts together. So this ayah deserves, ikhwani, our reflection and some ponderance. Rasulullah was the most intelligent person, he had the most hikmah, he had the most knowledge, he had the most ikhlas. But despite that, he wouldn't have never been able to bring the people together, the best of the people, the companions. Rasulullah had more ikhlas and he is the Habib of Allah and the Sayyid of Bani Adam and Allah loves him and yet he wouldn't have never been successful if it was left to him to go to bring them together with his own resources. If you gave everything in the earth. So if we were to gather up all of the money in the earth, all of the platinum, all of the gold, all of the diamonds, all of the oil, all of the cash, all of the, all of the currency, and gave it to the people and said, hey people, be united, be brothers. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. Because people are different. The Somalian is different from the Pakistani, and the Pakistani is different from the Arab, and the Arab is different from the African American, and he's different from the white man. So if you gave the people all the money in the earth, they're going to find reasons to be different just due to nature, the way they're created. But Allah put their hearts together. Not you, Muhammad, Allah. How did Allah put their hearts together? With the Tawheed of Al Islam. The Tawheed of Allah, they started to worship one God. They started to make the ibadat of Al-Islam like the Salat. When the people come together and they get in the role, and they tolerate each other, and they get close to each other, behind one Imam, following his movements. The Zakat, some of them are rich, some of them are poor. 
The aghniya, they do not forget the hukuk of the fuqara. And the fuqara are appreciative of that. So they come together. They all fast collectively in the month of Ramadan. And they make hajj all together in the same clothes. Allah brought their hearts together with this deen. So we see, Ikhwani, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari radiallahu anhum ajma'een. These companions were Arabs who were the Arabs that were pure. Their blood was not mixed with any non-Arabs. They were the purest of the Arabs and the best of the Arabs in their lineage. When they took this religion, they became brothers to people who were different from them, like Bilal ibn Rabah al-Habashi. The Ethiopian man, his life, what he knows, his food, his clothes, is different from the Arabs. But Bilal became a brother to them and they became a brother to Bilal. Salman al-Farisi, all the way in Persia. His clothes, his ta'am, everything, his adat, taqali, customs, culture, everything different from the Arabs. But because of the deen, they became brothers. Suhaib al-Rumi, Suhaib was from Rome, grew up in Rome. How far is Rome from the culture of the Arabs? He became their brother. Even Ikhwani. Some Jews like Abdullah bin Salam, like our mother, Safiya bint Huyay, radiallahu anhuma. Jews became brothers to those Arabs. And Allah has described the condition of the Yahud when He said in the Quran, لَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودِ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا you are going to find those people who hate the Muslims more than anyone else. Who hates the Muslims most? The Jews and the Mushriks. The Mushrikun, they hate the Muslims because at tawheed is against shirk. And the Yahud, they hate the Muslims because they have hasad for so many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the Muslims with. The point here is, the Yahud, they are the people who have the most hatred, enmity, and problems with the Muslims. And yet, when they embraced the religion of Al-Islam, they became brothers to Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Kasha, and the rest of the companions, radiallahu anhu. So we have to take a lesson out of that book. If we were to try to unite and become brothers based upon money, it's not going to work. Based upon his beer, it's not going to work. Based upon anything other than this deen, it's not going to work. That is what we gain from the lesson in this particular issue. So the akhuwa of al-Islam, the brother of al-Islam, the brotherhood, it has to be understood, ikhwani, and it has to be practiced after it is understood. As Allah Azza mentioned, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَ الْقُلُوبِ Whoever exalts the institutions of Allah, it is a sign and a proof of the taqwa that is in his heart. The brotherhood of Al-Islam is an institution of Al-Islam. Just as that adhan that we heard before Salat al-Asr is an institution. The Salat is an institution. This Masjid is an institution. The ladies' hijab is an institution. Sha'ira from Al-Islam. No one puts down the Sha'ir of Al-Islam except something is wrong with his Iman. And the people who put up the Sha'ir of Al-Islam is a delil of the Taqwa that's in their hearts. The Kaaba is an institution, a Sha'ira, and so forth and so on. So this brotherhood, as it relates to comprehending the fiqh of the brotherhood of Al-Islam and how to be brothers to one another, based upon what we saw from the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, there are too many things that need to be mentioned. But I just want to share with you just very briefly a few incidents just to show you their understanding of al-wala wal bara Their understanding of who my brother is and who my brother isn't. In America, black people in America, we call other black people, yeah, that's my brother. And he's a non-Muslim. It's my brother. What's up, brother? 